Hello and welcome back to the channel. In this video I want to review and refactor several examples of bad JavaScript code that people send to me. And I hope that my way of thinking and the way how I refactor code will help you to improve your writing of the code. So let's jump right into it. So here is our first code example. And my first advice here will be to always understand the code that you are checking 100%, because you can't really improve it or debug it if you don't understand it. And it may happen that even 5 lines of code are super complicated and you need to take more time. This is completely fine, because this is necessary. Also, while trying to understand the code, it's much better to get the global picture of the project or of the function without really diving deep inside specific implementation. So here in our example the global picture will be that on the left we have some boolean condition and then we have and operator and something on the right that it is called. So actually I don't recommend to use such notation because it may be confusing for people and it's not that easy to read. Because actually what we want to do here we want to call this function when our left side is true. This is it. And normally it's much easier to understand and support such code if we simply rewrite it with if condition. So let's try. I will comment this out and simply write here if. Then inside if we want to copy everything that we have on the left. We didn't even care what we have there. So I'm pasting it inside if. And then inside I'm pasting this router navigate back. So you can already see the difference. As you can see here we have this AND operator and it was not really clear because it was a single liner, but now we see if condition and some logic inside and all developers can read such code. The next step will be to move everything that we have inside if condition to a variable. Why do we want to do this? Because we can name really nicely our variable and then it will be clear what it is going about. But for this we must understand what's happening here. As you can see we have here this router state view data, so we are reading it. And then here we have or empty object, which actually means that data here can be empty and then we want to take this empty object. And this is because we are trying to get here property menu open and of course if this part is undefined then we will get an error. This is why here it is written or and object. But for now we don't want to refactor this, we just want to move it out of if. And this is why I will create here a variable is menu opened. Why like this? Because as you can see here we are checking inside object that we have a property menu open. Which actually means that we are checking that our menu is opened. And I think is menu opened is really nice name because first of all we have here is which actually means that this is boolean. And then we have here menu opened. So not is open or is opened. It is is menu opened. So this is human readable and everybody understand what it is about. Now we can really just copy everything from our if and put it here inside this variable. And now we are writing here is menu opened, then we are making navigate back. And just compare it with our previous code. You really need to understand what's going on here to understand if it will be called or not. In our case we don't really care what is here on the right, because we have the property and we know the name. Is menu opened is understandable. This is why ok, here we know if menu is opened, we want to navigate back. The next step here will be to simplify this line of code. As you can see here we have some strange notation like state view data for example, because actually this is not a variable, which means view exists always in this case inside state. So actually we can rewrite it just with state.view and it will be the same, but it will be much easier to read. And the same goes for data, so here state.view.data or object, and here we can also use dot notation, because we know that it will be never undefined. So either this data or empty object, and of course we can take menu open just directly from the object. And this code is much easier to read, because it is written without array. The next step will be to refactor this OR and empty object here. And actually yes, this code is working, but in this case we are doing something like setting default value. 
And I have here really four ways how we can improve this code. First of all, we can create additional property for this, just because then we won't have this inline default setting of the variable. This is why here we can create, for example, view data property, and we simply move all this code to our new property. And as you can see here, we simply have this router state view data or empty object. So this is completely clear. And now we can use here view data dot menu open and everybody understand what's going on. Another possible way to fix it is by using Elvis operator. What is Elvis operator? This is the checking of nested properties with question mark. In this case, our code won't break. For example, we have object A and then we have property B and property C. And actually, maybe this B does not exist and then we are taking C of undefined and we are getting the error. So if we are putting here a question mark after B, this means that maybe B doesn't exist and this code won't fail. The point is that this question mark is actually Elvis operator, and it's not supported natively inside JavaScript, but if you are using, for example, TypeScript or Babel 7, as you can see here, Babel 7 supports Elvis operator. And actually this means that you can use this code if you are using some framework with Babel 7 or maybe TypeScript. So let's rewrite now our code with using Elvis operator. So here I reverted our code to previous state, and now instead of this or empty object, we can remove this part and simply say that this router state exists, view exists, but maybe data does not exist. This is why we are putting here question mark, and this means that our code won't break, even if data is undefined. But this only will work in TypeScript or with Babel. Another problem is that all this construction will give us undefined back, because at the moment when this is undefined, of course we are not getting boolean back. This is why here I can write at the end or false. So in this case, if we can't really get this menu open, then our is menu opened property will be false. And I think this is really a nice approach if you can use Elvis operator, because your code is looking really clean and easy to read. The third way to solve this problem is by using simple ternary operator. So actually we can in line check if we have view data. So here we can write this router state view data, then we are checking if we have it, and if yes, then we are writing here this router state view data dot menu open. In other case we are returning here false. So actually this construction is looking similar to what we have previously. So here we have a fallback to false, and in this case we are getting menu open. And this code will work everywhere, but this code is a little bit verbose, because we really duplicate this part twice. First of all to check the condition, and secondly to get menu open. And the last idea that I want to show you is if you are using some library to make data transformation, like for example Lodash or Ramda, then you can use really nice functions from these libraries to get nested elements from the object. In our case, for example, if we are writing with Ramda, we can write here r.pathor, and if you don't know pathor, it's trying to get some nested property or return some default value. So actually here, first of all, we are setting default value, this is false. And then here we are writing our path. So here we want to start path from this router. This is why here we have state, then here we have view, and here we have data. And then as a last argument here, I have this router. And here I am removing everything, and I forgot to add here menu open. This is our last property. So this is how our code is looking like. We have here r path or, this is the default value, this is our path of the object to get some nested property, and this is our value from where we are reading it. So why this code is better than, for example, Elvis operator? In Elvis operator, you really need to put question mark in every single property. 
In our case, this construction with path or won't fail if any of these properties will fail. It means that if we don't have state inside router, it won't fail, it will just return false. And the same with view, data, menu, open, because we are trying to get something which is deeply nested and this function doesn't care how deep it is. It won't break, it will always return false and doesn't matter how many stuff we are writing for our nesting. As you can see, we have quite a lot of stuff to improve, even when we have a single line of code. Now, let's look on the second code example that we have. As you can see here, we have a function is numeric, so somebody created a function, and we are getting here text as an argument, and probably this function is checking that our text inside is numeric. And here, as you can see, we have a string of valid characters, like from 0 to 9 and dot, and then we have some magic calculation with for each, so actually we are iterating through our s text and we are taking each character. And then we are checking if this character is inside our string. And actually, even without diving deep inside this code, I see two main problems here. First of all, such stuff as is numeric is really basics in every single language, which means probably there are some tools or some functions that we can use inside JavaScript and not reinvent the wheel. And we will try it later. And the second point is of course, sure, we can do something like that, but as you can see inside valid characters, we have here dot, which actually means if we are throwing inside this function, for example, three dots, it will return us true, because every symbol inside this string will be our valid character. So actually, if you see the case where it doesn't make sense to improve code, but it is better to rewrite, then just try and do it. So ok, we know is numeric, is taking text, and we must get true or false back. And actually it is checking if we can convert our text to a number, and if yes, then we are getting true. So what can we use in plain JavaScript for this? Actually we have in plain JavaScript a number function, and we can throw inside whatever to try and convert this to a number. For example, we are throwing inside a string and we are getting not a number, because it's not possible to convert it to number. But if we are throwing inside, for example, 1 to 3, as you can see, we are getting back a number. And if we are throwing inside float, as you can see, it is also working. Which actually means we can use directly this function and then we don't need to write all this logic. But we need to return here not a number, but a boolean, so true or false which means we need to check if we can convert it to number or not. And for this we have a special function which is is not a number, and inside we are throwing, for example, some string, and we are getting back true, because it's not a number. But if we are throwing inside not a number, then we are getting back also true. But if we are throwing inside some number, for example 1.2, we are of course getting false. Which actually means we can use these two functions to create our own function is numeric. This is why I will comment it out and here on the bottom create new function. So we want to name it is numeric and here we are getting text as an argument. So first of all we want to convert our text to number. So this is why we are writing here number and we are passing inside our text. So this will either return for us not a number or a valid number. And if we want to return boolean, we can call here our function is not a number, so is none, and we are passing inside everything that we have. In this case, we are getting back true if it is not a number. But we want to get here is numeric, which means this is completely the opposite. This is why here I will put the exclamation mark. And actually we can check this code, for example in the console, I will just paste this function here, now we are calling is numeric, and we are passing inside some text, we are getting false, we are passing here some numbers, we are getting true. And even with floats it will work correctly. So as you can see sometimes it doesn't make any sense to refactor the code, because we can implement our own function much faster, easier and it will be more correct.
So as you can see, you can always improve your code. And sometimes you don't have enough knowledge to write better code, this is completely fine. But if you are checking code from other people, for example pull requests, even if you don't review them, but other people do, then you can see the thoughts of other people, the code of other people, and you can later improve your code also. Also, if you want to improve your programming skills, I have a lot of advanced courses regarding different web technologies. And if you are interested, I will link them down in the description box below. So don't forget to check them out. And if you like this video and you want more content like this, don't forget to put thumbs up to support me and subscribe to the channel. And as always, happy coding!